One year ago, Buxbaum Jewelry Advisors were preparing for what they thought would be all going out of business sales in 2009 across their client landscape. Instead, the firm seized an opportunity to work with diamond and jewelry clients and turn around operations in order to keep them in business. Group executive Stephen Buxbaum said that at the moment, wholesale inventory liquidation is running about 30% to 40% of costs for large bulk sales. That is unchanged from this point in 2009. But the figures are down from better than 50% of costs from a few years ago. Meanwhile, even though there are some signs of stability in the retail side of the business, there are extremely high levels of inventory waiting to be moved on the wholesale side, and this is leading to more deals on Memo. You know, obviously, they're trying as much as possible to figure out ways to alleviate that backlog because they don't want to take, you know, the hit of having to sell it at a, you know, at a loss to cost. They're all trying to, you know, achieve cost out of this inventory. And, you know, that's very difficult to do. One of the things that, you know, obviously people would like to do is, is get inventory out into the stores. That's why one of the things that's holding up stores is that there's a tremendous amount of memo out there where people that feel have a good relationship with a store are, you know, putting goods on memos to, to people in order to expose it to the customer for sale because nobody can buy it if it's in a vault on 47th Street. It's got to be, you know, in somebody's showcase. So to the extent, and, you know, the jewelry business has always been a relationship business, uh, that people have those relationships. Uh, I think re uh, wholesalers are feeling more comfortable uh, with memo than they are with sale because what they discovered is at least with memo if you properly protect yourself you still own that inventory if the retailer has a problem if you sell it to them even on terms or whatever whether they pay you or they don't pay you that's now then their collateral or if they have a lender the lenders collateral so I think you know what we've seen is a, a tremendous amount and it's a, we, we can't quantify because nobody reports it but there there's a lot of memo inventory sitting in and retailers' cases today. In keeping with new frugal consumerism here in the United States, Buxbaum worked with jewelry designer John Atencio in Denver to refocus the famed brand on his home market and reach out to build a wider customer base in order to save the business. And we'd come up with a concept that we've used successfully, which is to close a store and build a chain-wide promotion around a store closing and make it a store closing consolidation event and that you know creates urgency for the customer so we closed his last uh, San Francisco location on Union Square and we created the sale in Denver based around we've closed the San Francisco location and we started it uh, late last summer and we basically worked with the chain through uh, you know January of this year to operate it and what we did which they hadn't done before is we brought in merchandise from other uh, designers and other manufacturers were able to create more value with that merchandise and at the same time come in with, at price points that were not price points that he'd been filling and that showed the ability to sell a different price point and so at the time as we were stabilizing the finances they were to create able to create inventory at that lower price point using a lot more silver and and you know other kinds of alternative metal in order to you know get to a place where they could do more volume it you know requires more sales but they've got better margin and you know they're doing you know the more transactions per store than previously so on the same amount of volume that they're doing say a year ago to today, they're actually making a lot more money because the margins are much stronger. So, and you know, it's, it's helped because the customer base is now coming back and realizing that they can afford a Tensio because I think what everybody's found in the jewelry market today at retail is the customer wants more value and they're spending less money. So they're looking for you know, lower price points than they generally were looking for uh, you know, back in uh, 05, 06 in order to, to keep them happy. The good news is that because it was a concentrated market and Denver is one of the few places where you're still getting good newspaper readership. I mean, one of the most difficult things for retailers today is they don't know how to reach their customer. I mean, we're in a very 
confusing time in terms of advertising and what's going to work. And in most markets, newspapers are no longer working. Denver was a rare uh, case. People aren't sure how to use the internet. Everybody knows the internet is important and Facebook's important and Twitter's important, but how? You know, and, and how, how do I make that shift because, you, you know, how do I get direct response? And it's difficult. Radio is a wonderful medium today, but it's very expensive. You've got to have multiple stores in a market because radio's reach is so wide. Television advertising is extremely expensive. Cable used to be a very good medium, but it's become very difficult now because between cable and the dish, the dish is now back to national. And so many people aren't using cable anymore. Once you get outside of the city, they're all on, on the dish, and you're back to you can't pay national advertising rates for local, you know, for, for local stores. So it, it's you know taken away another you know sort of uh, avenue that you might have. So it's become extremely difficult for the small store retailer to find a way to reach you know the customer unless you know, they are the great merchants that they need to be and that they've got to know their customer, they've got to have the great mailing list and they've got to, you know, really be proactive about it. Hopefully they've got email because email is, you know, very inexpensive to reach the customer and the people that have done that are the, the people that are, you know, succeeding the best. But otherwise, you know, if you miss that sea change to catch up, is going to take some time. Stephen also said the price of gold throughout this long recession really helped keep jewelers afloat is they profited from turning into quasi pawn shops. But there are important elements to consider with that model, and Stephen shares his thoughts in an essay on Diamonds.net titled, Gold Buying Helps U.S. Jewelers Amid the Great Recession. Be sure to check that out. Gold prices this week were volatile, even with new highs for the year. There was noticeable profit taking just as investors weighed risks associated with sovereign debt ratings in Europe. Here is a look at how precious metals performed this week. For all the latest industry news, be sure to visit diamonds.net.